mysterious, semi-sentient, plant-like, omnivorous and massive are all words which perfectly describe a sarlacc. However, it's hard to muster any more adjectives given the species' mysterious origin and unrevealed past. But let's change that fact, let's take a detailed look at sarlaccs. Welcome to the Characters and Star Wars Lore Episode 145, The Sarlacc. Which came first, the Sarlacc or the Spore? Well, according to legend, it was the Sarlacc. As told by generations of Tusken Raiders, the Sarlacc gave birth to itself in Tatooine's planetary core in the days before the twin suns split apart from a single star. However, even though the Sand People refused to accept any other explanation from the obviously false legend, the true origin story of the Sarlacc was hard to accurately determine. This was due to the species' reproduction cycle. When both genders made contact, the male attached itself to the female in a parasitic fashion. Over the next several thousand years, the male slowly consumed its mate, replacing the area in which she once lay. Upon fertilising the reproduction sac, the melted couple released its spores into the atmosphere. After travelling thousands of light years throughout the galaxy, the spores eventually settled down on planets such as Argonar, Daphomir, Darun, Felicia, Uvo 4, Socorro and Tatooine. Initially, the spores attached themselves to an organism to feed from its blood. However, they soon broke away into a more mobile larva. Capable of hunting and consuming prey, the species grew to be ferocious and dominant. Even if eaten by a larger predator, the larva would kill and eat the creature from within. Eventually, the larva developed into a large worm with multiple tentacles and a beak-like maw. It then dug itself into a pit, growing downward like an immobile plant anchored in place by its thick roots. Serving a secondary purpose, Sarlacc roots absorbed additional nutrients from the ground. However, the creatures primarily fed through their large gaping maws, which lay in wait above ground. Lacking eyes or ears, Sarlaccs relied upon sensors in their tentacles to detect vibrations from nearby prey. Dragged into a mouth lined with razor sharp teeth that pointed inward and faced with another tentacle which acted like a tongue, the unfortunate victims were immediately trapped. But despite their huge nature, a Sarlacc could survive off very little food. As a result, captured prey were digested very slowly while still alive for millennia. How was prey kept alive for such a long period of time, I hear you ask? Well, depending on their weight, size and strength, detected by a Sarlacc's throat, the victims were assigned to one of many stomachs within the creature where they were injected with neurotoxins to prevent any chance of escape. However, they were also fed with nutrients to prolong the unimaginable pain. While we're on the topic, the species' throats were lined with microscopic openings which dispersed mucus. The slimy substance broke down any sand, gravel or soil that fell into the sarlacc's mouth, therefore maintaining a healthy throat. To no surprise, given the fact the sarlacc buried its vital organs under 100 metres of sand and soil, the species could live for 20,000 to 50,000 years. Furthermore, as only greater crate dragons of Tatooine and the Guka dragon of Aragonar were known to prey upon them, adult sarlaccs lived a relatively carefree life. <laughs> Perhaps the most famous or infamous sarlacc was the one located in the Great Pit of Carcoon, beneath the sands of Tatooine's Dune Sea. Jabba the Hutt used the creature for years to dispose of enemies, until his death in 4 ABY. During the skirmish which led to the Crime Lord's demise, Bounty Hunter Boba Fett was knocked into the Sarlacc. However, due to his iron will and Mandalorian armour, Fett managed the impossible. He escaped the beast. While studying a holographic recording recovered from the bounty hunter's helmet, senior anthropologist Mamun Hul uncovered an alarming truth. As it turned out, 
the sunlight could seemingly telepathically torture its prey, injecting them with stimuli to feed off their fears. Furthermore, research indicated that the consciousness of the Sarlacc's victims joined to form a huge network of awareness. Consequently, victims could communicate with one another during their horrendous ordeals. Only one other being was known to have escaped the Sarlacc. Zorba the Hutt was swallowed, but not eaten, rather regurgitated. The reason as to why was unclear. Zorba, however, claimed it was due to his nature, as no sarlacc could ever hope to digest a hut. The largest known sarlacc in galactic history resided within the ancient abyss on Felucia. Unusually, Jedi Master Shakti managed to tame the massive creature. However, following her duel with Starkiller, T was swallowed by the beast. Now it's time for this week's question. What Star Wars character would you throw into the Sarlacc pit? Let me know in the comments below. I have a feeling I'm going to get a lot of Jar Jar Binks's. Anyway, remember to vote for next week's episode by participating in the card poll on screen now. Also, to have your say in future lore videos, head on over to thecarrycastance.com and get voting. Thanks for watching, and for more Star Wars related content, keep it locked here. To the Kingstance. Foley had small brains, it appears the creatures became more intelligent as the packs grew, and some packs had the potential to be huge because they reproduced by fission, meaning raftar numbers could rapidly escalate if not controlled. Studying these creatures was an incredibly tough task due to their dangerous nature. Because of this reason, it was widely believed, but not 100% confirmed, that raftars were related to Sarlax, Blixie and Vixuses. Just like Sarlaccs, raftars consumed anything that could fit in their mouth, which was a large funnel surrounded by razor-sharp teeth.